Happy Thursday. Great to be with you. We're going to take a look today at a pretty interesting reading for from Mark's gospel. It's our gospel reading for this coming weekend. It goes like this. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says, but be on your guard for they will deliver you over to councils and you'll be beaten in synagogues and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. The gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. When they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. A little context here is probably important. This comes in a section where Jesus is talking with his disciples about being prepared for the end for a coming storm, for the difficult battle of the last days. That's one of the things we see in our worship service as we get near the end of the church year, which is where we are now. Near the end of the season of Pentecost, the focus shifts away toward things that we ought to be doing as individual Christians living our lives, and it takes that same kind of emphasis, what we ought to be doing, and reminds us of the role that it has in witnessing to the world before Jesus returns in glory. So you hear he tells the disciples that they've got struggles coming, that they're going to be beaten and shamed, but they should see that persecution as an opportunity to witness. They don't need to memorize a five-point presentation to give. What they need to do is have confidence that the Holy Spirit will guide them in that moment. One of the things that really jumped out of this reading at me, this is what I wanted to spend a moment on with you today, is this. All at once, in one paragraph, Jesus tells them to, number one, be ready, but number two, do not worry. And I don't know how you feel about that, but to me, those are two things that can be difficult to hold together at the same time. Sometimes for me, worry is what causes me to want to be ready. For some people, getting ready causes them to worry. I think oftentimes, oftentimes we choose to worry because it comes naturally to us. Sometimes it paralyzes us and keeps us from doing the things that are necessary to be ready. Of course, here Jesus is talking about spiritual things, not vacuuming your house or making sure the dishwasher is loaded or something like that. Instead, what he's encouraging us to do is to be ready for the coming storm by, you know, the things being in God's word regularly, being frequent in prayer, frequent in devotion, frequent in worship. Those are the things that we should do to be ready for the coming storm. But why should we not worry? With all that readiness to do, well, because we have confidence that the Holy Spirit will guide us and that we'll be kept secure all the way through to the end in God's grace. So be ready, but also do not worry. If you find that difficult to do, well, I think you're in pretty good company. At the same time, we ought to remember that even though God calls us toward impossible things, we shouldn't just say, can't do it, won't try. I think there's beauty in the trying. There's also an opportunity to witness in the trying. Let's close with prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, because of your tender love toward us sinners, you have given us your Son, that believing in him we might have everlasting life. Continue to grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may remain steadfast in this faith to the end, and finally come to life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, thanks for clicking. See you next time.